Hello, everybody. Hello. There you go. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, Annie. Oh, you, 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 you have all your, your new what your setup. You, you dress up. Yes. <laughs> hey, well, great to see you here, and um, and for everybody, let's let's just. Um, you know, like let's let's wait for a for a few minutes. We're waiting up. We're very very excited here today. You know, we have a special occasion because we invited Annie today with um, to be with us, and uh, we have a special occasion. You know, you want to tell everybody why are we. Uh, um we are we are here today yeah well i'm very excited to say that yeah i have um gotten a, a new title at dallas opera um mm -hmm. I'm now, uh, the uh, tdo network and social media manager officially um so very very excited about those developments uh it's been a crazy last three plus months <laughs> um when I started about a year ago, I did not expect this to, to be what happened a year at the company, but I am um, really yeah. excited at the direction everything um, went in, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's been super, 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 super great. And um, also, we uh, woke up today to the incredible news that in, in our Facebook channel, we, we hit about like 5 million people tuning to our content in Facebook uh, for the past 30 days, right? That, that, was, it's that, was, that, was, the, that was the morning of, you know? So that was, that, was, uh, that was pretty, pretty impressive, you know? So I'm very, 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 very impressed with, with how we're doing and, um, yeah, we've had so, really steady, really steady growth, which has been. Steady. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and uh, anyway, I, I I wanted to chat with you know with you and you know with with everybody that is here today. You know, it's 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 a a very beautiful weekend. You know, things are slowing down in a little bit in pause in the in the world of classical music. You know, and uh, and so I'm very very. I'm ha by the way, I'm having really terrible connection. You know, I don't. This is cutting in and out. Oh, I'm having some connection issues. I'm okay. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I hear you a little bit. It's strange, but um, uh, anyway, I I was I was very uh, you know this week I had an incredible opportunity to talk with the 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 San Francisco Conservatory and. Um, <laughs> What it's got to have. Also, you are the only opera house doing this network. <laughs> yes, a network. You know, uh, innovate. Thank you, James. Thank you. And um, and so anyway, I, I I was very 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 impressed with. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I I. I had again. I, I following my process. I, I had the opportunity to talk with the San Francisco Conservatory uh, this week and their leadership of of uh, Center of New Leadership, and uh, and I took with a few things of the business that for me were very very important. You know, so and uh, and for me that that's that was where I was. Uh, oh, hello! A lot of people now started joining in. We were a little, I was a little early today turning in, but anyway. Um, so I, I uh, talked to, to certain realities of, of this, and I wanted to talk to you because not only you're our new TDO manager of social media, you are in the, you know, embedded into the millennial technology because you're part of the network, 
right? And uh, and that's where it's, you know, like I feel that it's an, uh, an incredible bouncing board for us in TDO to have someone like you that is so like recently graduated of, of the, of, you know, the training for to become a singer. But you did a very, very impressive transition really fast and clearly again, congratulations for the new promotion and all the result and the hard work that we've been doing with all the team that resulted in family and of, of, you know, people tuning into our content and in, in Facebook. Uh, but anyway, one of the things that I, that I discovered for that, that I was doing research that time that I, that I did that, um, I, uh, I, I went into search about, uh, you know, how does this, the streaming service, now that everybody is online, right? How do, how do we monetize that? So I went and, and, and did a little bit of research and, and I found, for example, a streaming, a streaming things that we're paying and Pandora. That was that was the first thing that I could find, you know, and I wanted to share with everybody that is tuning today and, and bounce out these ideas with you. Uh, I found out that, for example, Beyonce, just in the past month, right? I know, I Beyonce, <laughs> Beyonce was tuned in uh, about uh, 6.5 million users in just one month, unique users like tune Pandora's content that she has there. Uh, it's about 10 albums, I believe. And, um, and that generated 39 million stream plays, right? Uh, nothing against like the, the big sacred cows in our business, but for example, I, I searched Gustavo Duramel. I thought, you know, he has so many recordings. He's with Deutsche Grammophon. He has, uh, he's a music director of like the most, the biggest financial, uh, like wealthy, let's say orchestra in the planet that is the Los Angeles Philharmonic today. And, and, and she, he has an incredible PR, a charming present, you know, an electric conductor. I, I really love Gustavo. He's a, a really, really, really one of my favorites. And he had in Pandora 3,000 unique users and 6 million users, 6 million streams for last month with 26 um, albums that are available there. And that's when I started to get really worried because I also find out like how much does Pandora pay you? for per stream, right? Uh, and, and it's something that's why our, our strategy in TDO Network is about volume in a way, you know, uh, besides, you know, the quality of the content, but we really, really create a lot of marketing uh, expectations and strategies for volume because Pandora pays you 0 0.00, 11 cents per play. So the last month with that math, Beyonce made $50,000 in a month just from Pandora. You know, I'm sure that she got more in Spotify, in iTunes, in other places, but that, that makes you a little bit of like, where is it, right? Where, where, how much is that? And I'm sure, you know, from that, she has to play the label, the PR, the managers, everything. And she probably seen about between seven to 20% of that money coming to her and then tax, blah, 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 right? Uh, Gustavo Ramel without the same mouth in just Pandora, made $9.17 that month. What it really shocked me because I'm, you know, you and I were in classical music and I, uh, and this is, here comes the question. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, as you know, in a, in, in a lot of uh, professional orchestras in a lot of, of professional uh, opera houses, uh, we pay, for example, in the electronic media agreement of AFM, that is the American Federation of, 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 of musicians, uh, you pay like around between 150 to $200 uh, dollars per player per digital release of what you want to do, right? And, um, and I said, well, but we're only doing $9 in one month in 26 albums. So that, that really made my, like, my worry. Like we already knew that we're not like in the classical music as an industry doesn't have a lot of, of airtime. But for you that right now, you know, you are at the joystick control of the Tito Network, where you see it, where, where you see all the statistics, all the insights, where are we tune and everything. How does that make you feel? You know, like you're, you're also, uh, if you may share, you're engaged to one of the rising stars of, of the American young artist scene, incredible Andrew Gilstrap. And uh, so how, how do you guys deal with that kind of reality when you hear things like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the entire I mean, it's like, how do we get, how, how can we get that kind of success in classical music? And especially now when it, when the digital platform is our, our only platform that we have. And so 
as we're looking at all the numbers and we're and we're you know doing our, our senior network which is as we go week by week it's experimental you know we adjust things every single week based on what we're reading mm -hmm. sites and things like that so i mean it it's a concern you know you want to see like what's the secret? how can we get to that level in classical music and so right now it's just all about trying to figure out that formula and figure out like what's going to what's going to get us to that level and um and of course like there's the pre-covid i mean it was a problem pre-covid and now we have covid on top of that so um obviously right. we're, we're just trying to figure out like uh, what what is the secret to classical music getting on that level um and 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 for example like you know like you you know for i feel you know for for the for the artists that had already like you know like a career they were established uh, a lot of them you know europe is starting to re reopen uh, and so they are back to like kind of almost business as usual you know they they're playing to emptier houses they're playing with with social distance uh with a lot of things that are happening but they are starting to come back right to to real work so uh but but a lot of 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 the the let's say like the like the ones that are about to get a shot you know you know that the ones that is like i don't want to waste my shot but i'm just right there and then covid happened you know you were you you just graduated you're ready to go you 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 just book a young artist like how how do you guys see it you know like uh, from from your perspective that you were there you were a, you were very visionary in your way that you said well you know i really feel that i want to go into administration and you really started to prepare that path right before like even you know we didn't know that that covid was going to happen right oh my god uh, <laughs> but but from the timing was very i was very of, of, of all that. <laughs> and I'm sure you know like all your friends and and anything like how how do you see them like how 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 did the response is it just like like oh my god what are we going to do or, or do you see that there's conversations about you know we have to transform we have to take this in our hands how how do you guys feel in that sense um it's definitely it's definitely both there's been phases of course of, of lots of different emotions so mm -hmm. initially um, there was a lot of a lot of fear and a lot of um, kind of downcast uh, mm -hmm. op opinions about the whole thing. And as it, I mean, especially though in the last two weeks, I think it's been extremely frustrating because as we see your Europe go back to normal, um, it's really hard to see our country, you know, take you know whatever you want to call it, two steps forward, one step back. Like we're, we we didn't do it correctly the first time, and now we have to do it again, and we further delay. Um, that possibility of, of going back to normal, whatever that looks like post-COVID. Um, that aside, I think it is really hard for those singers who were, as you said, on the brink. They were truly on the brink of, you know, either signing with an agent or, or having their first season that was kind of officially laid out for them, where they didn't have to worry where their next rent check was going to come, at least for a little while. And I think it's really, it's really hard for those singers who were so close to that. Um, I, I think it's hard for even established singers, of course, um, but the ones that had a, had it a little more figured out, that were a little more established in the business, I think the hop back into normalcy will be slightly, slightly easier. Of course, it's not going to be easy for anyone, um, yeah. the way things are going. But I think it's hard if you were if you were just starting to maybe, you know, get a little attention from agents and things like that, and now those agents that were giving you attention they're struggling themselves to stay in business, let alone helping you stay in business. So I think that's, of course, that's of course very, very hard. You know, you were, you were so close to grasping it and it's, you know, it's take, it's been taken away from, from everyone. Every different part of the business has been hit. And, and how do you, like, is there, is there a, like, is there conversations about like, you know, kind of like taking it on your own hands? Like is it, we have seen a lot of different things of how to deal with it. You know, now, so you and I spend a lot of time in, in the internet finding, you know, content creators, proposals, exploring things that, that it's, uh, that is great. Yeah, yeah, like pivoting that it's not like, it's not the end for singers, you know, like finding a new way, a new media to deliver your art form and creativity you know and and it's and it's coming a lot about you know uh there's so many ways i see people starting to teach virtually a lot 
Uh, I myself I have been uh, very very lucky to be invited to to be to be uh, making some special appearances with with different programs with different institutions uh, about uh, teaching or casting or auditioning or about digital solutions right but um, but but is is there like the the when this happened and and you see how not like we were not prepared digitally as a structure as an industry completely and you're you know a young kid that just went into massive amount of debt because you wanted to have this incredible situation this career right mm -hmm. and you go there and you say like oh my god like like the industry was not like it was already hard to break in oh yeah and then these these guys didn't prepare us for a crisis like the like i don't want to say like you guys feel cheated but like um how, how how do we get out of this you know like how do you feel like from from your incredible like point of view that you you see that the controls of a platform that generates five million views a month like like how how do you think that this is it like do, should we embrace it like you know i hear a lot of people is like well like we shouldn't do a lot of the facebook things because we, we we're the the real thing is opera Right. I think that attitude is totally. I think that attitude is totally backwards and incorrect. I think we need to be flexible, and and those that are flexible are the ones that are gonna keep moving forward and and, and have the most likelihood of success after all of this is is over. I don't like to use the word over because I think there is gonna be a shift in, in the way the world looks at at everything. I, you know, after after all of this, uh, after all the shutdown, you know, finishes out, and we we have new rules on social and things that will, will be there forever. We're not going to ever go back to exactly the way it used to be. Um, and I think that anyone that that is under the impression that it will go back exactly the way it used to be is just misguided. And I think there needs to be a little bit of a wake-up call. And not everyone wants to accept that yet. And and that's okay. Like, it's okay for, I think, people to, to come to that realization at different times. It's hard. This is a very hard thing, especially, like you said, when you've invested years and years and years into it looking a specific way when you finally got out of school and to have it come to the rug just completely pulled from underneath your feet it is hard to to think okay i have to regroup everything um but singers need to they need to learn you know the new technology they need to figure out a way to continue their craft because at the end of the day it is about the craft but the means through which the craft is going to be delivered Mm -hmm. looking at, we're looking at change, and I think accepting that change and being willing to embrace it is, is important right now. Whether that I, up, oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, 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 I wanted to, to, to ask you, for example, you know, like if it's helpful, like sometimes I get notes or emails that, that some of the information that I put out on my social network, like it's, it's demoralizing on, or some a little alarming, you know, like when I say these kind of figures about Pandora or, or something like that, but but I also feel that at the same time, sometimes, you know, the industry per se, like there's misconceptions, you know, I, uh, I, and I, and I, you know, I wanted to have you here because you, you are my, my closest representation of like the, the people that just are getting into the pipeline and, and a very successful case, you know, the, the, of that trend of entering the pipeline in your case. So I, I feel that the opera industry just went into a realization, like, and I'm, I'm sorry for the, this analogy that I'm going to do of, um, you know, for years, we were that kind of like, 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 you know, junior baby or something you know that that we were bailed out by our credit card our credit cards were went max but our our dad was was bailing us out every year because they love us and they love what we do and we're so creative and we like you know we're we're great but like we, our dad is like you know like it's is bailing us a little bit every every year and we're used to that kind of structure and we have an incredible relationship with our dad we we nurture that we we feel that that the dad is very involved in our things he goes to our place he goes to our soccer matches like we have an incredible relation we're it's a great great situation and and while dad was getting the, that amount of wealth it was fantastic right like like we could leave that. I could go to to all these things, but then COVID happens, right? And and that not only like loses um, the job, or it cannot generate a lot of that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I'm sure that you, you you're understanding that that is like our incredible system of donors that that, that thank God they they are with us, right? Yeah. But but they lose like 
a lot of money in their portfolio as well, you know, because of, of COVID. Not only that, they have to now take also conscious if the, if the dollar goes to, to save their own families, that also their families might be struggling because of that and their employees, their companies, or whatever source of wealth that they were available, that that, that created some sort of margin that, that they started to be incredible philanthropic hearts towards, towards the industry. Right. Because let's not remember that that in in America, at least in the United States, the 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 ranges in major opera houses goes between uh, the division between 70 to 30 to 80 to 90, 10. Um, and in how much we survive by by giving income, by donor money. Right. And so now I feel that, you know, that says, well, you know what, like I cannot pay your credit card, so you're going to have to get a job. Right. Uh, uh, and uh, and and now you have to get a job, and we find ourselves that we for the first time we have to go into the market, right? Mm -hmm. And then we didn't have instruction in, in we didn't have a structure of of that digital market because that's a marketplace today, the screen, right? Since we cannot move around, and uh, and we find ourselves that now our value is is exactly like this. You know, you go Napster plays like zero point zero nineteen cents. Mm -hmm. Tito, title plays 0125. Apple Music plays 0 0.000735 per play. Google Play, the same. Spotify, 0 0.0437. And YouTube, 0 0.000069 per play. So, the number of streams to earn per dollar is 1,449, you know? In order to get a minimum wage uh, for YouTube, you have to have two million one hundred and thirty three plays in that in your channel and that and so when we weren 't preparing how to structure content when we weren 't preparing how to be present in those platforms because that 's where we 're consuming today, we suddenly are like that uh, like what well, it reminded me a lot when you started like a year with us you know you enter like with an entry level job you know you a lot of hours you have to learn a lot like you're barely making it like work financially with your work balance and everything but you had to make it there and then because you learn the skills and everything you are slowly but surely it's starting to increase your market value and your reach and that's exactly why I feel the opera companies and the, and the classical music has to be like that. Like, you have to be like Annie, you know? <laughs> you know, but, that, that, but that's what we have to do, you know? You, like, when you started, you didn't know Canva, you were not using Splice, you were not doing Facebook Insights. Like, you thought that you were just going to be the assistant of the casting director, and, and we're going to have fun, and we're going to hear music a lot, and we're going to prepare auditions. And look where you are, you know? Like, like am, I, am I a little bit, like, does it sound, like, true from your side of the, of the millennial part of it? Like, I, maybe I simplify it a little bit, and I didn't want it to sound like the classical music is a spoiled child, but... But, uh, oh, but I think but, that's an accurate metaphor, and, and we do need to learn how to support ourselves. We just do. Like, um, I, I really think, like, I, I mean, the thoughts occur to me, like, why singers, why, why don't we have a, a business class as a mandatory requirement? You know, I, I didn't, so I don't know anyone that did. And, you know, and I think we're starting to try to incorporate that into young artist programs and things like that. Like, I'm seeing a very, like, a slow, a slow transition, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, you need to you need to figure that kind of stuff out because we need to be able to support ourselves without dad's help, you know. And we again, we love dad's help; it's great. We're so appreciative, but we can't. Our livelihood can't be dependent on that. Dependent on that. That's just. And they have helped us so much. Yes, you know. And we're so grateful. Like, where would we be without without them? Like, and and again, like from from the institutional side. You know, like they are, they are still helping us so much and, and please don't stop ever. But I think that we, everybody has to, but everybody like, like the, 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 the full country, you know, like the government has to create a little bit of infrastructure that, that, you know, uh, that, that helps to the arts. You know, the, the UK just released a package of 1.2 billion do, uh, pounds to help the industry of the arts. I think Germany is on their second 2 billion package that they have released. And also they are starting, you know. And also Germany ta taxes so much their, their income, but it goes back. So actually the community as a whole has decided that they're going to pay that, that amount of taxes if they get back that amount of culture, healthcare, and all those things. I'm not going to get political on this one, but I just... 
the community decided that they needed arts and that's why they paid that amount of taxes. Here is a very different aspect. We depend a lot on tickets uh, like value and, 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 and our dad, you know, and our donors. But but I think that but, we need but, to start, uh, th this COVID gave us, we need to have realistic digital matters, realistic digital structures in across the streets in every single matter of classical music. And, I, and, and here in this forum with you that you, you know, you are in the pipeline coming in, you have somebody in your life that is in that pipeline from the performing side. And yeah. I think that you guys have to go with the eyes as open as you can because the next time that you see that it's like, oh my God, but like somebody's streaming something that they, that you already pay me the performance and they're not paying me back and force my jewel and everything. Like you have to understand that that is the money that, that, that we make if we stream anything. Absolutely. Right? Like we need to look at everything, like anything you see, you need to think, you need to constantly be innovative about it. How, how like if you see a cool TikTok video, you're like, the, the first thought should be like, okay, how can I use this platform? you know, to, to help my passion and to help, to help my industry. Um, and I think you have to go into it without that fear. You know, if you don't know how to do something, if there's an app you don't know how to use, download it and start playing with it. And, and don't wait till you're dependent on it. You know, don't wait till you have to use it for some business related reason. Like start, start figuring it out, start having fun with it, start playing with your social media platforms and, and using these tools. Um, so that you already you're already familiar with them and can start incorporating them more naturally into into your business, because that's and, and, you, you know and and you're you're very creative in handling a lot of the of the front end you know like and now in your new title you're starting to get a little more distance with the content creators and we have uh, coming uh, some showrunners that are going to start getting into into being the first filter the way they used to be at the beginning of of, of TDO network, mm -hmm. uh, but. But you know, every content creator has their, there are people that they love to be in camera. There are people that they don't want to be in camera. They want people that are very good. Like, you know, they talk a lot. They are people that are great listeners. They're people like, like for what do you say, you know, because you again, you're, you are so into the traffic, right? What do you say when, 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 when somebody is like, oh, but I, but, I, but social media is not for me because I'm, I don't have anything to say. I'm not there. Like, how, how would you respond and now that you're kind of like, you know, part of the mobile team of, of TD and I were on this? I mean, it also, first of all, depends who's saying it. If, if you're, you know, in the arts and you're saying that, then, then my question is like, then, then why are you doing what you're doing? Because this is the best way right now to put the materials out there. Sorry, maybe that was too harsh. Um. No, that, that, that's, that, that's real, you know? But like, you know, this is, this is the platform we have right now and you know, you need to, you need to roll with the punches and sorry, not everyone wants to hear that. That's something that's really hard to hear, but you know, you got to roll with the punches. Like this is our new platform right now. We don't have access to our stages. You know, we don't have, even if you're more like into visual art, you know, we don't, you can't be walking around a museum right now. Like it's and especially depending on what state you're in. And this is a way to share, to share your materials. And I think that if you, if you fight that, you're only hurting yourself. You're only hurting yourself and you're only hurting your industry and your art. Um, people that that have that attitude, I, I understand it, but like the world has changed drastically in the last several months. And um, I think it's time to start, you know, dipping your toes in. Even if, if you can't jump in head first, start dipping your toes in at least, you know, um, and start getting familiar with it. And and, 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 on, and on the practical, you know, like a specific, um, output where do you see that the conversation of classical music is happening right now if i if i'm if i'm just tuning into the very first you know creative conversations or you're gonna see it later in our web page uh, uh in our in our facebook when we drop it uh what would you say like if i'm the first i'm, I'm a singer i i haven't done a lot but i want to start to to put some content there like what is the first platform that i would see you know like do i concentrate on instagram do i go to tiktok that apparently now is like exploding do i go to twitter because uh, you know like i can you know be responsive like what do you feel where is the classical music conversation today from you are at the controls you know you're the, you're you're right there like what do you think about that i i, I think it i think Personally, right now, it would be, it's the Facebook, Instagram combo. I think using both of those tools together is, is mm -hmm. the most effective place right now and the way to do that. Because um, 
I think most of the conversations are honestly happening on Instagram lives, much like what we're doing right now. This is where a lot of the, the you know, ideas are coming from, the discussions are coming from. Um, but also there's been a lot of live performances on Facebook as well. Um, each, each platform has unique uh, qualities that, that make it, you know, make one better than the other for different reasons. So it also depends on what kind of um, what kind of product you're trying to put out there. If you're trying to put out a live recital versus you're trying to um, do more of like an interview discussion, I think the interview discussions can work better on, on Instagram. And I think that recitals maybe can work better on, on Facebook for certain reasons. Um, not to get into too much, because that would be a whole other hour long, <laughs> hour -long <laughs> conversation as to, as to why. And we can get but but can you develop a tiny bit like, like highlights of that? Because sure. this is very interesting. You know, like we have a lot of people that are pu putting that type of content out there right totally like uh how how do you feel that this like what is the difference you know you and i have discussed this in, in immensely you know yes. from tdo network but but what do you see the plus and cons of each platform for classical music for classical music like specifically i mean first of all with instagram a lot of it's your followership you know, if you if you have not been working on your followership on Instagram and you you know you only have several hundred followers, it's not going to be as effective. You know, putting it putting it out there on on your Instagram page, it's it's a start. I'm not I'm, try, I'm not discouraging that people like don't start that process, but um, Facebook is a little different because of the way that you can share that material, um, the way that you can be cross posting things, the way that um, you can um, be going towards the goal of monetization too, which goes hand in hand with the discussion we were having earlier of being of working towards supporting yourself. Um, and that's a little easier to attain, in, in my opinion, on Facebook than on Instagram. Um, monetization on Instagram is a little bit different of a process. It's a little bit closer to blogging, whereas Facebook has it set up where, where you can really like have very clear um, steps towards that goal. Um, mm -hmm. They're not easy steps, but they're a little more clearly laid out than if you're going to be um, pursuing that that process on Instagram. But do, do you do you feel that there's also like different demographics? Like you see a different different kind of people participating in each platform. Oh yes, I mean definitely. Facebook has has I think the generation above more so than Instagram. Instagram is definitely more of the of the gen z millennial age group which we've talked about i believe that's kind of it's like the more like in your 20s and then you know 20s 30s and then uh well, and, and younger of course um mm -hmm. and then facebook we were getting more into the 20s to 40s 50s and even above and even above yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah everyone has their has their facebook grandparents too so um <laughs> the facebook grandparents yes, yeah I, they share all of our stuff and comment on everything so thank you to Facebook grandparents everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but, mm -hmm. um, oh, there's like oh. a question. Can you give us? Yeah, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, Madeline, that's a good question. Can you give us some concrete suggestions on how to help the TDO network from a different continent? Uh, well, Madeline, you do an amazing job of that currently. I mean, at the end of the day, we're looking for as much interaction, shares, engagement as we can. And so the more people that share materials, the better. Um, and what we also like to do is we like to work on cross posting, um, which if you don't know what that is, it's uh, where, you know, if you have your own page and your own followership, it's essentially sharing that um, with with another page and another page's followership so that the engagement and the numbers combine. Um, and you can both can benefit from each other um, with those numbers and shares and likes and all that engagement. So we're, we're utilizing that a lot. Um, and we we are just encouraging everyone to to share as much as possible. The shares are what's huge. We we love likes, we love comments, but the more you share, the more people that it webs out to that we can get that engagement. So that yeah. would be that's my main answer. And Madeline, thank you, thank you for that that question. But but also just to give a little content, Madeline is one of the graduates of our incredible, amazing. Uh, program that we have the Heart Institute for Women Conductors. She is an incredible conductor herself. I think right now she is in Vienna, Madeline. Yeah, and she's a phenomenal conductor. So if if anybody of here is 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 looking for for an, a phenomenal like really 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 like full of passion and soul uh, conductor, like please like you know look for Madeline and look of course for our graduates of the Heart Institute. They are they are like incredible boss ladies that also they're incredible artists too, you they're know, amazing. and so yeah, and just, that was so the commercial. 
<laughs> yeah, she's like kind of our like European ambassador, I feel, yes. you know, so it's, it's great. Exactly. Um, anyway, I, I want to, after the commercial, you know, I, you, you, I, I really love that you're giving us like really, really specific, like, uh, kind of tips, you know, about, about content, like how, how, uh, yes, integrated social approach. That's, that's where we are, my friend. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and what, what do you feel like from your joy? Like you see the ratings of every single one, every single piece of content that we put out, mm -hmm. like, like, is there a little bit of tips that, that you would say to the, to the, to the ones that don't have the institutional resources that you, that, that we have at TDO Network? Uh, like what, what would you say, you know, like I, I have a hundred followers and most of my friends and family, I just like finished my master's. I um I just went through the first you know four months of COVID. I I'm I'm a little I I got through it and now I'm ready to do something. You know, like I want to put something social media. Finally, buy in. Like what 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 are the things that we see? You know, like from TD Network and what do you see from your chair to like that it works. No, my number one step would be for an individual. So if you're not coming from you know an institution necessarily. Make sure, first of all, that if you are trying to expand your, your materials in one way or another, you are trying to, to get your numbers higher, uh, make sure you're not in private mode. Um, that's, you know, that's great. If you want to have a personal account that you just do, like, friends and family so that you can, like, rant on your story about something funny or, like, that you don't want the whole world to see, fine. But if you're trying to really get, boost your numbers, you got to get off private mode because, the, and you need to up your content. You need to have a schedule. You know, you have to have a regimen. You need to actually plan it out in your calendar and make sure you have consistent content. And mm -hmm. the more that you put that out there and if your numbers are public, it's going to organically start start growing. Um, yeah. Start getting people that are interested and, and start sharing it and, and reposting it on Instagram or Facebook on their own stories. And that's going to help organically get your numbers higher and get to share that that material. Um, How about like, you know, when we started, we, we were very fans of the conversations, you know, we were one of the first ones to do conversation. We still very successful shows like Ask Maestro and, 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 you know, we have really good luck to have people from all over the world and, and, um, and, and that, that, that tune on to create a conversation Instagram, uh, but but how like we have we have retool a little bit of our content like how do you think about the people that just like you know basically put their life and it's like i'm gonna practice and they're like three hours there you know like uh, is that easy to like to to connect with that content do, do would you see from the insights part that it that it works uh, i'm not spilling the beans of our techniques but i just want to help a little bit to also yeah. for us to recruit better content you know we always are searching who is there who is there Absolutely. So yeah, we we're not looking to see someone's three three hour practice regimen. Um, that might be fascinating to you, but that is not fascinating to to others. We're looking for short. I mean, even with our numbers, one of the things that we discovered as we were experimenting was like the shorter that our content got, the more concise, the tighter. Because it's not just about length; it's about the quality of what is in those like each each minute. Um, yeah. That is going to be far more easily shareable and far more easily digestible for a viewer. And like, let's be honest, like we all are just scrolling through, you know what I mean? Like we, we need something that's going to hold our attention and it can't be something we have to commit to. Everyone's busy. You know, you can't be committing to a three hour lecture. People have things to do. So, um, so you really yeah. concise. And if you are going to put out your own kind of recorded content, you need to plan it out. Don't just go in rogue. <laughs> like, make sure you <laughs> Make sure you outline like what you're going to either talk about, what you're going to be performing um, and, and, you know, put thought into it because, you know, we see a way higher shares, way higher numbers with our three minute or less videos um, than we do with something that that goes on and on and on. Um, and that's something we've been able to tweak week by week and why the insights are so important to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that that's. That was very, very important, you know, the tightness and the planning, you know, it's something that, that social media is a real marketing platform uh, uh, now, to, especially if it, like you use it for, for expanding your business or your brand. It has to be very, very well planned, you know, like uh, it has to have like editorial, a little bit like tailor-made like edits. You have to, you have, to have a, a, like a plan of where you're going in your conversation and where you're gonna end. What does the, the people tuning to your content want to, 
to like do you want them to live with you know like i i i had you know for example in in our conversations we did have a little bit of of a chat about what we want to chat uh we you know we're celebrating our first month of five million people tuning in facebook and your incredible promotion uh, to to uh, of Tidio Network at the same time, you know. So that's why we we you are we are here today. And I said, you know, like you are a millennial, you are very very in in ingrained in the in the in the need and greed of how we create this, and you see so much content and you work with so many content creators. And and so I said, well, you know, let let's without like spilling a lot of like the, the, some of the magic that makes us who we are at Studio Network, like how can we help the content creators to, to be better? I, I think another thing is the expectation of monetization of media right away, you know, oh. and that affects everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's a long game and I think people really need to accept that. Like anything, it's like practice, practice, practice. Like that's how you get to Carnegie Hall. How do you get <laughs> How do you make, you know, see these, you see these influencers that like, you know, say like, I make like, you know, $50,000 a month and all just these crazy numbers. Well, that may be the case. And some of that might be a little bit exaggerated and spam, but a lot of it is because they work at it for years and they, they're consistent. And it's not all about like the glam and, and the photos and everything. It's about showing up every single day and being consistent. Um, and there's, there's a couple books actually that talk about that. One of them, I think it's called, I actually have it in my room. It's called like the compound effect, I think. And it talks about that. Um, it talks about like that, that it's the consistency every single day that makes the difference, that there isn't going to be a magic. There's no magic trick that, that, to make that happen. Um, yeah. And so you can't expect that it can, it's going to be able to pay all your bills within the first two months. You have to, you, you have to be in it for the long game. And and you know I I I I think the long game is is where we are and 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 also I feel you know like don't don't you feel that now social media also is especially for singers if you're wanting to expand your brand and we see the people that are tuning in and and also with our again that what makes us special is how we we push our content and how we work with all the tools that are out there on 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 reach to enhance your reach and your content uh, and uh, but that it makes classical music universal. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, it ha the 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 frontiers are 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 really kind of erasing. Like you can be connecting with people in South Africa and Indonesia and Myanmar. We get messages from all over the world that have seen our content. Sometimes in a language that we're like, okay, Google Translate, so we can yeah. answer <laughs> and things like that, right? So, but 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 how do you feel? You know, like before I felt, you know, like oh, we are we're the American opera industry, or we're the Europeans, or and there you would get counsel from from mentors like, oh, go to Germany. They have so many. You can get into ensemble and go there and like like do you do you see that various like i i don't know like that's my understanding but like from your point of view in the pipeline do you see that 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 that's something that scares your 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 population is something that you're embracing you're so like of course i want to compete with the very very best you know i want to play with the bet everywhere um i mean i think that i think that especially post covid like and and just centering so much on social media we are kind of at least for the art form specifically we're starting to eliminate those borders a little bit i think i think we're really starting to interact so much more than we used to um from you know country to country and from you know how even house to house and so um i think and i think that's a positive change i mean i think that a lot of singers are excited about that because i think there are i think that young singers they want that adventure. They want that experience of, of other cultures and other, other forms of opera and other, like, other perspectives. Um, I think it's still scary because it's the, it's the matter of how you're going to get there in this time yeah. period. And I think that that is the scary part. But I don't think that it's, it's anything that's discouraging right now. I think it's just a matter of how. So I and and I put it down there because I wanted to pivot to to a question that hopefully we can discuss for the next ten minutes and then we uh, say goodbye to our friends that are tuning today. Uh, you know you 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 are you are an American artist. You are uh, you know like your you, your partner is an American artist. Uh, and there's there's something that that is not very all in the open and and I might be a little controversial and and. And please take it with a grain of salt. It was something that I experienced, and it's maybe my utopical way of thinking of the industry. But 
I, um, there is in, in right now with all the social issues that exist of, 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 of division and, 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 and barriers in people to be there. Like I have a vision of an opera industry in, that is worldwide, that is a safe space for everybody, no matter your color, no matter how much money you have, no matter your preference, no matter anything, like a, a global space where you can be yourself, except for where you are, because when you're accepted, you can create better, you can relate emotions better. But, mm -hmm. but right now in, in the professional opera houses, uh, level one, level two in, in, in the United States, there is actually a reglamentation uh by by you know i'm sorry to say but it is there and, and you can research with your agma representatives that uh protects the american artists uh or resident artists like they have uh, resident citizens that have green card blue so if you have a blue passport or a green card uh you can do this you can sing every single type of role in american houses but if you're a foreign artist you can only sing the lead right and uh but everybody joins the union Everybody has to pay their dues, everybody that, but different kind of rights, depending where you're born, right? I see strategies like the Premier League in, the, in, in, in soccer or the NBA here that have embraced that kind of lack, like they, they raise the protectionism of, of the American population mm -hmm. and make an international industry of themselves. And, and not only they went into financial wealth, like to the roof, you know, but also created structures of digital fundraising worldwide yes. or, or revenues worldwide because they see representation in the stage from all over the world. So it was not just the responsibility of the people that attend the, the, the game of the Houston Rockets to, to create revenue. The moment that they put Yao Ming, China was tuning for thousands and thousands and thousands of people, right? And allow them to create revenue on open markets that way. Yeah. But mostly, it also made the American players to, or the English players in, in England to raise their level because now they were competing with the very, very, very best of the world. The, industri the industry is already a little bit there at the top, but clearly is not the same at the bottom. Yes. And I can hear a lot of the, I hear a lot when I raise this in private, this, this argument is like, oh, but it's fundraised by American money. And, 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 but, but as we know, like Papa just lost the job. So yeah. we have to go and find somewhere else and different sorts of revenue and structures that even if we are closed, we can, we can also create digital connection that eventually translated revenue and, trans and, and we can actually pay the bills and, and, and employ artists, right? Um, so if you're in the right in the pipeline, and this is very critical, you just start a pipeline. If these protectionist like rules blown away and they're removed, suddenly you're competing with the best is it like, how would you feel that way uh, coming from the American artist? Like, is it disrespectful? Is it like, well, you know, it, it should be fair because 50% of the ensemble formations in Germany are American. Americans don't get like segregated in any other companies in the planet of opera, but here we protect the other way around. Like, how do you feel about that from your pipeline position right now? I mean, honestly, I, I think that it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. The way, like, I really do think that, you know, it's that competition is what's gonna it's gonna weed out the people that are serious and the people that like really are going to to be hungry enough to make it to that position. And I think that just that coddling that that I mean, again, this is all very controversial and, and you know, forgive me if I'm too harsh, but coddling that yeah. it, it's first of all, it's not realistic because this is a very much an inter international like art form you know like uh, once you get to that point you're, you're traveling all over the world and so to to coddle that at the young age it, it just it's it's not productive it's not realistic and it's not it's not fair at the end of the day um it presents a very 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 unrealistic picture of like that i i personally myself in 2006 I was the winner of Operalia, that it was a worldwide competition, and I felt that that changed my brand very particularly. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't compete at that time in the Metropolitan Opera National Council. Mm -hmm. I didn't, uh, that, and, and I saw the careers of American artists that, that, that they were phenomenal. They're great singers, right? Like, they're great. But then, you know, they didn't translate in, in the global arena as much as, as some of the guys that have won the World Cup. You know, like that's, and, and, and that's just from my sandbox. Again, like, please, I'm sure I'm going to get some DMs about this. 
you know, but, uh, <laughs> well, but, but a of a conversation too, you know, and, and that's the beauty of it is hearing, hearing all different sides of it. And, and as we, as we discover like these changes that we can be starting to move towards. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, for, for, for the, for the, you know, cause we're, we're getting closer to, to our, our time, you know, I, I think that, that it's, that's why we do this in the two network. We like to, to kind of, really like bring you like almost like hard knocks in the NFL, the show that HBO does, mm -hmm. or bring you to what really happens, you know, like when, where we are there, you know, like how, how difficult it is to become like uh, uh, an employed singer period. And then it's like 17,000 times more to be the Jonas Kalman, the Ben Bernheim, the, the Isabel Leonard, the Dean Sierra the, of the Angel Blues of the world, right? They, but they hustle. We work with some of those, for some of those artists that I mentioned in, in our, in our TDO network, you know, they are spewing content, they are teaching online, they're doing masterclass online, they have their own series, they are present because they, they are nurturing the connection between their fans, you know? Mm -hmm. They also realize they're international and this moment, their message can spread everywhere independently. If they didn't know you, if they didn't, were not hiring you in Dresden, now through social media, they might do. They might know who you yeah. are. Yeah. Ex exactly. So I, I, I think that, you know, in, in, in several issues, I wanted to, you know, again, to talk to you today. One, because uh, we've got the five million. Two, because, yeah, you got the promotion. Three, because of your point of view of that. But I, I wanted to make a little bit of the connection of, like, when when all the, the artists and musicians are asking for, like, the, the world, and we in TDO Network are very conscious of that, and we do pay for the content creators that are in our, in our network, so I want to put that very, very clear. But when you are spewing media, uh, it has to be related with the realistic market value of that media. Mm -hmm. Not what Papa pays for that media. Right. right. Right? Number one. Number two, if you are an artist today and you cannot perform, you have to perform in a different medium. That's all. We will figure it out. And, and people are researching constantly. Now there's 360 mics that can actually record properly voices as big as my super dear Kristen Gerke. Right. And uh, and you have to explore them, but you have to be realistic. If you're starting this career, you have to understand that today the game is not just about learning your score. It's not only about like singing very pretty and learning how to turn the passage. It is really, really hard. If you really want to make a patrimony and, and pay your bill from this art form, you have to be social media relevant. You have to be who you are, very true to your values, because now people want to know. Like, it's very old school to say, like, you sing. I don't want to know anything about you. We see in our engagement what we say, our social truth, that people connect with us, good or bad. Yeah. But that's where you want to create as an artist, a reaction, not just an applause because you have a good high C. You want to be moving people. So that's what we do. And that was the real one of the main real success of, of, of TDO Network. And uh, lastly, you know, the, the, the next one was giving realistic tools, like as you said, you know, and making a little bit of summary of, of a specifics, you know, where the conversation is, what is your demographic, how you do it, the consistency that you have to have. You see it, you as a manager, you see it, how consistent we have to be uh, to build fellowship and be relevant. And, and, and not, being, not being afraid of that, you know, like I think that's one of the most important things that, that the part of the fear of this is that, uh, that a lot of us feel like, you know, as insecure artists that we're going to get judged. But if you don't start, you're not going to know how good you are. Right? Yeah. If you're scared of doing it and if you're uncomfortable doing it, that's the exact reason you should be doing it. <laughs> yeah. If you have a stage fright, why are you going to be on the stage, right? Yeah, yeah and... <laughs> your uncomfortable technology. That's exactly why you should learn, be figuring it out. Dive in head first, you know, like you do, do the things you're scared of because that's, that's, if, if nothing else, I think that's, that's not a number one reason. Yeah. And, and, but... and lastly, also, I think that, that since, you know, social media is open for every frontier, uh, I just wanted to, to put it together in a way that, that we are going to say, you know, like, operates for everybody, you know, and we need to start thinking of instruments that that show to the world that we are 
trying to really be a reference in the pop, not, and, and I don't want to degrade pop culture, I'm saying popular everyday culture. I want to see, just like I see the LeBron James te tennis shoes, sneakers, everywhere from my video game, from my VR lenses, from the phone, everything, right? Like we, opera has to be as relevant. If not, we are museum art. And I think that the, the, uh, we, you and I live with these content creators and these incredible creative minds in within the realm opera that people need to know. Like right. people need to know the, the incredible artists that all the list that would we talk today uh, about just as much as Tom Cruise, right? You know, so you, you that's what I, I because the, the artistic level is, 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 is super high, you know, so in a way that that's what i what i feel that that i want to do and and it's not anymore this industry cannot be uh you know like that 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 can be uh a situation where we are uh today that it's it's just between barriers you know but Wonderful. Annie, you you have you know an incredible story and 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 you have a few minutes uh, here like well, how, what would you want to say to all our fans in, in two minutes before we go? Honestly, just kind of jumping off some of the things that you said, like the nice thing about social media is that it, it's accessible. You know, you don't, it's not, it's not a $4,000 summer program that you can't afford to get your foot in the door, you know, for, for an opera career. It's a way that everyone can start and it doesn't cost any money other than just having a phone, which, which nearly everyone has a phone these days in, in 2020. So um, I think it's, it's a much more accessible way to, to start launching that career um, because some of those barriers are, are high fees and things like that, where, you know, it's, it's a lot more accessible if you already have money versus if you don't. Um, it's, it's a free way to get your name out there, to get your voice out there, to get, to get everything out there. Um, and so I think we should all be starting to try to take advantage of that, even if it's not how we, how we originally saw ourselves um, taking advantage of it. I think that that's part of the change that needs to happen and it's something that is accessible. Wow, wow. And, and, uh... And also, you know, like grateful for, for everybody that follows us, you know, that we really like 5 million people in classical music. Like we are relevant guys. We are, we are there, you <laughs> know, <laughs> and uh, well, you know, I think we're, we're almost there. I, we see a, a lot of people still joining in, but we are, we're about to, to close our feet today. I, I want to, want to thank uh, uh, everybody that joined in today, our incredible board, you know, that keeps supporting us. Yeah. It keeps us afloat. Uh, our leadership team, uh, I see Lisa Beery, our incredible head of strategy here today. She's always tuning in, very supportive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's the type of leadership we want. You know, we want involve, involve relevant. And, 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 and today the leadership that in, in classical music needs to be, you know, like relevant in, in, in the stage, relevant artistically, community-wise, diversity-wise, uh, and, and just, you know, you have to really, really embrace the business aspect of it. So I am very thankful for everybody at the Dallas Opera. Congratulations, Annie. You're an incredible part of this, this success of the industry. Uh, Thank you. And uh, to everybody that is here, like follow her. She has incredible tips about how to be relevant in social media. And, um, and again, guys, we'll see you very, very, very soon. Keep tuning the content of TO Network. This is David Lomeli for Creative Conversations and with the newest TDO manager for the Dallas Opera, the incredible and one and only Annie Penner today. Thank you, thank you for having me. And I mean, all of this is due to your birth child of <laughs> the TDO network. So that's why, that's why we're here. So. Well, thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thank you very much. Uh, my mom just texted me that I that I should let you speak more. So like, thank you, mom. <laughs> we will do we will do an episode two so Annie can monologue the next time. So I oh, I. That trust me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I uh, grateful again for joining me here today, and um, see you very soon. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks so much for everyone that tuned in. Okay. Ciao. Bye.